My name is William Butler. I'm 62. I'll be 63 next month. And uh, I'm from Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. So can you talk a little bit how affordable housing has impacted you? Well, I um, first started to uh, advocate for affordable housing back in the 1980s and uh, have come to the point where I've needed affordable housing. I have a Section 8 uh, housing voucher. I live in Ocean Grove, of course, and uh, am very uh, active in the Methodist Church. Um, I can go to the great auditorium to, uh, to listen to people like uh, Chaplain uh, Black of the United States Senate when he comes my birthday week, but also I can work at Wegmans, which I have been doing since uh, November 2014, uh, to be able to take the bus, uh, walking within three blocks of taking the bus, and then uh, taking the bus back and, and walking home. So it's a job that I like, it's a wonderful company, it's wonderful people, and to have affordable housing has made that all possible. Yeah, it's great to hear that you know, affordable housing has given you the opportunity to become independent, to have a better life, to have a quality of life. And I think a lot of Americans lack that right now. So what are some of the lacks in affordable housing that you see that some people are not getting? Well, I, I, you know, a, a lot of people aren't getting affordable housing, period. Yeah. And it's, uh, what, I'm, what I'm afraid of is that uh, there will be people who are one paycheck away um, from not being able to afford where they live right now. At least with the Section 8 voucher, um, I have to save my money. I don't know what I'm looking at next year. Um, but I uh, think with, without affordable housing, where there are rent subsidies, a lot of people will be in dire straits. In the state of Massachusetts, my new pastor said that it would take a, a one person to work a 19-hour day to afford a one-bedroom apartment and then the area to choose to live in. Um, uh, Lieutenant Governor Quidagno, who is running for governor, saying that a lot of people are leaving New Jersey because they can't afford to live here, even though they do work. So we have a long way to go um, to make make housing available, not just for people who need affordable housing now, but for people who are going to need it that we don't even know about right yeah. now. And I think that's very important because a lot of our veterans and a lot of our senior citizens see as they're going down the line that they may not be able to work as much as they could or are unable to and lack, you know, the means to get affordable housing. Well, my my kidneys function at 24% of normal, and it's only going to go down. Right now it's stable. I have a wonderful nephrologist in Dr. Mahandra. Um, who is right outside of my my hometown, you know, to go see him. But I don't know how many years I have before I, I can't work anymore. So it's, uh, it's contingent upon me to really be able to budget and to, to know what to do uh, when the time comes when I can't work anymore. I have a 401k, thanks to Wegmans, um, but it's, it's, it's an uncertain future, and, you know, if we have these budget cuts um, that are being proposed, it's, it's, it's going to be a very uncertain future, um, and it's going to be extremely problematic. Yeah. So, what we, you know, that is a very dire future, you know, what do we tell our members of Congress and our elected officials to prevent that, to prevent people falling through the cracks? Well, I think, you know, uh, it's not falling through the cracks that I'm worried about, it's falling through the gaps. Um, we, today, we've been talking about affordable housing, but we've been able to talk about affordable uh, health care. I've gotten my glasses through Medicare, I've gotten my hearing aids through Medicaid. Um, by being able to work, um, 
everything goes back into my social security disability check and uh, I've been able to, um, to, to notice that my quality of life has improved. I want that for everybody and um, without affordable housing that's not possible. When I went to college, we talked about the whole man concept yeah. and um, without a place to live, uh, you have no uh, way to, uh, to, to be hired. Um, uh, we need to have a crew of those skills to get hired. Uh, when I lived in a boarding home, I, I spent $775 a month uh, back in 2001 to share a room. Uh, I spend less than that, including all my utilities for where I live now. So it's, it's, uh, it's something that real people need to come out with real stories. Yep for real solutions so that we make informed choices and we know what's what's best for our society and not just for us individually. And you're doing that right now. Thank you so much for sharing your story and being an advocate and protecting affordable health and the quality of life for all people in America. Thank you so much. Thank you.